receive up to one? Many tests horse and rider can undergo, but this is the ultimate. starter for the Grand National from Aintree Racecourse in England. Good morning everyone and welcome once again to Nine's Wide World of Sports. The Grand National is without doubt the most exacting test of a horse and rider in the world. It remains virtually unchanged since its inception way back in 1839. Since then there have been many attempts to have the race banned but somehow the Grand National survives. Year after year thrills and spills. The uncertainty and unpredictability the joy and elation of the winner, the disappointment and regrets of those who fail the course. It's all part of the Grand National's history. Luckily, it's taken once again. The four and a half mile race begins from the chute. Five plain fences confront them before they challenge the most famous fence in the history of steeplechasing. And of course, that's Beecher's Brook. Five feet high as they go into it, but with a massive 12 foot drop and a ditch awaiting them on the other side. The eighth is the canal turn, an incredible 90 degree hard left. Horse and rider must twist their very beings to clear this one. Over Valentine's, the ninth, then the long gallop across roads and fences until they come to the 15th, the chair, the highest, the widest, and the biggest fence in all of steeplechasing. It is here that a spectacular leap is needed to even clear the fence. Luckily, that one's taken only once, as is the 16th, the water jump. As if that isn't enough, two and a quarter miles remain and still 14 more fences to be conquered before one man and one horse can breathe the air at the very top of the mountain. Just a few days ago, there were over 60 entries for Latch at 10 to 1, 14's last suspect, and he could be in with another chance of winning it again. 16 to 1 is Corbier, Grease Paint and Hello Dandy, and at 20 to 1, Classified, Knock Hill and the Zarevich. Okay, we'll take a break, and then we'll come back for the running of the 148th Grand National from Aintree, right here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Welcome back to Nine's Wide World of Sports and in just a moment or two we'll be taking you live to the Aintree Racecourse, Liverpool in Great Britain for the running of the 1986 Grand National, the 148th running of this classic event over four and a half gruelling miles. Snow fell on the course this morning apparently, uh, it has since dissipated, the going is described as soft and all in all a pretty bleak day at Liverpool, uh, some cloud overhead and a shower or two predicted a little later, but still, what would you expect in midwinter in England? Right now, we're going live to Aintree, and we pick up our BBC commentators, Julian Wilson and Peter O'Sullivan. 
in the race, he fell in 82, and this horse, ridden by John Frankham last year, broken blood vessel, runs for Georgiana Brockman. On his left there is Tony Mullins, who is smiling away right at Lantern Lodge, I don't fancy that one. The pink cherry hearts there, Simon Sherwood riding plundering. Behind him, Knock Hill's colours, white and black of Peter Thompson. Then uh, Peter Scudamore looking very serious, always does. The stars of Graham Bradley. And then Mr. Snugfit in the blue and white, Phil Tuck. Second last year, Lentil nearly on the line. And then Charlie Mann coming out on W again. I don't see, think you'll see him at the finish. Then Richard Rowe on door latch. Kill Kill Owen, Tom Morgan. Then his brother behind him. Uh, Tom Morgan behind him, Ken Morgan in front. The stripes of Mount Oliver and John Bryan. Then Huel Davis on the Duchess of Westminster's horse, last suspect. Akarine is next in the green, red and yellow. Then we have Colin Brown. Colin, a really good horseman. Just looking now for Tom Taft there. Tom in the uh, black hoop there. His father, Pat Taft, won this race twice. Then we have Des Lyman's white and green colours on another Duke. He shouldn't be 200 to 1, you know. Certainly, there is the Czechoslovakian riding on Essex. Reg Crank on Imperial Black. Richard Dunwoody on West Tip in the blue and black. Neil Doughty after him with the spots on his cap on Hello Dandy. Then John White on the Zazarevich. And Steve Smith Eccles still looking glum, hasn't got over that last defeat on See You Then. And Philip Hobbs on Northern Bay. Then Corbier. Corbier behind him, we have Chris Grant. Chris Grant, who has ridden in this race several times. He's riding Young Driver for John Wilson. Paul Barton riding Feathered Friend for Case Alside. Dermot Brown, who only got this ride on Ballinacurra Lad just half an hour ago. And John Craig Smith on uh, St. Alizan for Martin Tate. Colin Hawkins then comes next, riding Bally Milan. And then the colours of Peter Pillar. That's Ridley Lamb riding this one. Behind him, we have the diamond of Tackroy and Andrew Stringer. And then Tim Thompson-Jones on Late Night Extra in the green and red. Graham McCourt in Lord Chelsea's colours on Port Escape, the blue epaulettes. Behind him, we have Little Pole there. In fact, that's Gail Warning and Sandy Dudgeon coming out now. And then Tommy Carmody on Grease Paint. This horse very much on his toes at the moment. Grease Paint, who is just standing there a little bit warm. He knows what it's all about. He's been there before. So from the lofty position of the tower, the runners starting to get in order for the parade. And this is a big moment for the horses. They've already been in action for some time. They, they're aware of what's ahead of them. The vast crowd down on the lawns. Chasing's Blue Ribbon event, the 1986 Seagram Grand National is only moments away. Before Peter O'Sullivan picks up commentary, here's Richard Pittman with the parade. The parade, and by golly, people do get excited. The, hun the Hungarian bred Essex here from Czechoslovakia, Vaclav Chalupka, he'll certainly be up to it, but he's got a daunting task with 12 stone. He's ridden in the part of which he 14 times. Corbier, number two, Ben de Haan, already a winner and uh, third the last two years. 14 to one at the moment. Drum Largan will be after him in the light colors there. Broke a blood vessel last year. Will he stay the trip again this year? Tommy Ryan in the saddle, 40 to one at the moment. Following him will be Kill Kill Owen, this horse who has stamina doubts. He's ridden by Ken Morgan, his first ride in the race for Ken Morgan. 33 to 1 shot, trained by Jim Draper. After him, we should have last suspect, last year's winner, very much on his toes in the paddock beforehand. Looks well, 14 to 1 shot, Huel Davis is riding him. The young horse, eight-year-old there in the black with the red hat, his door latch, number six. Josh Gifford trains him. Richard Rowe having his fifth ride. He's fallen three times. 
So the parade starting to get in some sort of order. The horses, of course, don't particularly like this. There is Ackerine number seven with the red sash. Peter Harris trains this one for his wife, Carol Robert Strong, having his second ride. He was seventh on Rupertino last year. That is in the yellow sleeves. Following him is West Tip number eight. Richard Dunwoody fell at Beaches last year, second circuit. He is seven to one, has an outstanding chance. Grease paint of former light here, but I think that he may be just over the top now. Tommy Carmody, 18 to one. Ballinacurra lad, there he is, number 10, 10 stone eight, Graham Bradley. Fell at the first last year, Graham, and he'll be looking to get a bit farther this year. 25 to one at the moment. Hello Dandy behind him in the black. There are three colors in black, but the look for the hats. That's how you'll see the difference. 14 to one shot, fell at the last, first last year, and he won it the year before. Looks exceptionally well, trained by Gordon Richards. Then the horse that's had fortunes on him, Mr. Snugfit, owned by Terry Ramsden. Phil Tuck in the saddle, very superstitious, and now down to five and a half to one. I'd want that about any horse getting round one circuit. Black with the lilac cap will be the Zarvich, who we'll see next. He's number 13. I hope that his owner, Ivan Strucker, superstitious. Funny old character, but a lot of class. John White having his third ride in the race. He was fifth on classified last year, 16 to one now. Number 14 will be Lantern Lodge. Tony Mullins rides him. He fell at uh, the 19th fence last year. Tony Mullins making the running 100 to 1 Lantern Lodge. And he wants faster ground than he's got today. After him, Tracy's special. This one owned by, that's the next horse, Tracy's special. Uh, this is Tony Mullins we're still looking at. But the next one will be Tracy's special. There he is, 100 to 1 shot. He certainly used to have form far better than he's got at the moment. He's owned by Les Amis from Bedford. Andy Tunnell trains him. Steve Knight in the saddle. Broomy Bank is 16. He's been round a couple of times before. Captain Lumsden bred this one. Peter Scudder will ride him. It's his sixth ride in the race. Peter's father has already won. Here is Classified. Classified, who was bought recently, ridden by Steve Smith Eccles, one of Nicky Henderson's two runners in the race. Fifth a year ago, 22 to one now. Gail Warning, who's a, a good hunter chaser. He's been round these fences three times. 40 to one, Sandy Dudge in the amateurs, plenty good enough. He ought to get round and could be thereabouts. Why forget Peter Pillar's colors? He's had quite a few runners. Ridley Lamb's sixth ride in the race. Completed three of five. Second on Sebastian in 1978. Another Duke and Des Lynham's horse getting very sweaty. I expect his owner is too. Paul Nichols rides him, 200 to one. And this horse is only a 40 to one shot, you know. He's far better than that 200 to one. And the people, I'm sure they've all backed their horses by now. The horses parading in front of them for their last glimpse. 21 is plundering, owned by a Mrs. Miles Valentine. 25 to one at the moment and uh, certainly on his best form has got a chance, but he hasn't quite been firing this season. Trained by Fred Winter, twice a winning jockey, twice a winning trainer. 22 is Tackroy. He's been back heavily in the last two years. Looks to be a light of yesteryear. 200 to one, Andy Stringer rides him. 23 is Imperial Black, ran a blinder last year. Don McCain has him now. Reg Crank having his fourth ride. He rode the favorite in 76, but I can't see this one getting any nearer than he did a year ago. The yellow colors of Rupertino should be next in the parade. Owned and bred by Lord Kenyon. There he is, ran a super race last year. Gareth Charles Jones having his first ride, 66 to one. Somalia likes soft ground and it's certainly gone a bit softer after the snow this morning. Samelia there and Tom Taff having his fourth ride in the national, not got round yet. His father Pat won it twice. 50 to one shot, Samelia. Young driver from Scotland there, trained by John Wilson. Chris Grant having his sixth ride. He's a 50 to one shot. After him, more yellow colors, Bonanor from uh, 
Willie Harney in Ireland. Tom Morgan rides in this race. So does his brother, Ken, 25 to 1 shot. After him, Doody fell at the 19th last year, but he looked like falling at two fences before that. Kevin Doolan, who's been in this race before, but yet to complete. And Ginger McCain ride, uh, trains this one. After him, Knock Hill really stays the trip. This one can be fancied. And Mark Dwyer having his first ride in the race, 16 to 1 shot, owned by Peter Thompson from America. Bally Milan after him, owned and trained by Felix Sheridan from Warwickshire, 50 to 1 shot. And uh, Colin Hawkins comes from Warrington nearby. The red colours of Feathered Friend, Paul Barton, had the choice of three rides and has taken this one, 40 to 1. Then late night extra, Tim Thompson Jones riding for Kim Bailey. Master Tursell after him, bought recently for 1,900 guineas. Then St. Alazan, 34 going down. Porter Skeg after him. Little Polvere, the crossbelts of W again. Then 10 Cherries going away from us. Northern Bay. And last but not least is Mount Oliver and John Bryan. So they go down to this long, long run-in, down to look at the first fence. There is Mount Oliver, blinkered. Michael Scudamore trains that one. And uh, he doesn't have a lot of form of late to recommend him. But this is a very good moment for the jockeys. They're on their own now for the first time for this big, grueling test. And for it, let's join commentator Peter O'Sullivan. And some of them coming back across the Melling Road after looking at the first fence and the others going down to have, for many of them, their very first view of it. Essex, the Iron Curtain Hope, took a very strong hold going down, but uh, Václav Chakluka held him very, very competently. Looking at the fence there, the white face on the right, St. Alazan, that's Sibeli Milan in the center, and over on the left, Fort Eskeg. That's Fort Eskeg center. There is Sommelier to the left, and Tom Taff, son of the famous Pat Taff, who of course was associated with the Great Arkle. Well, this is the point from which they'll be setting out some little while before they've sorted themselves out to the start of satisfaction we see them from the stands cross the melling road and go down towards beaches which is number six after jumping beaches they have a small well small uh, to use a, a euphemism on a grand national course a relatively small fence before they come to the canal which is number eight then Valentine's, number nine, 11 and 12 are ditches. 13 and 14 back onto the uh, race course are plain fences. Then in front of us there to the left is the daunting chair. And then the water, number 16. And after they've jumped the water, they pass the setting out point and have another complete circuit to encompass. There, one of the outsiders, Northern Bay, fell at the second in 1985. He's a fourth ride for Philip Hobbs, 30 years old, and he's lately been bought by the Cheveley Park stud, as has Classified come to that. So their colours being carried by two of them. In the foreground there, number seven is Acarine, and here's the latest betting. And Mr. Snugfit is the 11 to 2 favorite. West Tip 7 to 1. Doorlatch has come in to 8 to 1. Last Suspect 14 to 1. So is Corbier and Hello Dandy. The Zarovich 16s and Knock Hill is 16 to 1 with Grease Paint. Same price. Broomy Bank and Bananakara Lad 20 to 1. Classified 22 to 1. 25 to 1 bar. And last year's winner. Last suspect, number five, and Huel Davis. 29-year-old Huel, riding in his fifth national. And among the vast crowd here, the owner of Dorlatch, lately reduced from 10 to 1 to 8 to 1, 91-year-old, Mr. Jim Joel. Hoping to see his grand national luck which certainly hasn't been in the ascendant so far change this afternoon 
Oh, uh, the 40 hopefuls milling round at the start, Kill Killer and walking right there, ahead of the uh, Brestgirth, the Zarevich. Then uh, Corbier, another previous winner, and the favorite, Mr. Snugfit, number 12. Mr. Snugfit, 6 to 1, Westip, 7 to 1, Dorlatch, 8 to 1, 14 to 1, bar these three. And uh, Mr. Snugfit getting a reassuring pat there from uh, Phil Tuck, who shares a birthday, incidentally. They're both 29, born 10756, with Tommy Carmody, the rider of Grease Paint. This is Knock Hill, number 29, just uh, walking behind Mr. Snugfit. And no draw, of course, for this event. They line up where they can. That's Dorlatch. Number six, 14 in the foreground is Lantern Lodge. And in fact, uh, Corbier's rider has dismounted. Uh, Bender Hahn just to take the uh, weight off his back. There's West Tip, who was going great guns last year when he fell at Beaches on the second circuit. Richard by, written by Richard Dunwoody. He's the youngest rider in the race now, Richard, in the absence of uh, the luckless intended rider of Master Tercel, Eamon Murphy, whose place has now been taken by Dermot Brown. Dermot, 24 years old, will be having his second ride in the national. Eamon Murphy having been injured in the first race, but not too badly. You'll be relieved to hear if you saw that spill. He's got badly bruised ribs and thigh, but should be okay in a short time. Corbier, the 1983 hero who was third in both 84 and 85. Is there, I just wondered for a moment if there was any anxiety about him, no. Uh, ben de Haan, back on him. Ben, who rode him to his famous, famous victory, having his fifth ride in the race, 26 years old. Kill Killer in one of the hopes of Ireland and very heavily back this morning at long odds. Ken Morgan's first ride in the race is 25 years old and considered to be a very, very fine jumper. This here's Drum Largan and Tommy Ryan, one of the senior riders in the race, is 34 years old, having his second ride. He's walking currently with the youngest rider, Richard Dunwoody, on West Tip. Mr. Snugfit, 13 to 2 now from 6 to 1. East half a point. West tip, 7 to 1. Dorl edge, 8 to 1. 14 bar the 3. That's why I forget walking right. Followed by plundering. And here is Essex, very much on his toes. This first Czech runner in the Grand National for 55 years. He's a full horse. And he's obviously very keen to get on with the job. His rider, Vaslav Chakluka, an engineer, is both his trainer and his rider. And he'll be very pleased when the starter calls him in, because this horse getting quite stirred up. He doesn't like to be headed. Wonder if he'll pursue a lone furrow uh, on the outside down towards the first of the 30 fences, where incidentally we'll be joining our commentator, John Hanmer, who'll be seeing them over the first and the next few fences. And then as we get into Beecher's sector, Julian Wilson will be picking them up, seeing them over Beecher's, the fence after, and then over the canal and Valentine's. And the next fence, where you'll hand over to John Hanmer, who'll see them over two ditches over on the far side, then hand back to the grandstand commentary point as they cross the milling road to be seen over two plain fences then number 15 the chair number 16 the water and then they'll be out into the country again on their final circuit hello dandy another previous winner with on his outside another duke in the colors of des Lynam. hello dandy uh, written by Neil Doughty, one of the three competitors who've already won the race. And, of course, it was on this horse in 1984. 
He was also fourth in 83. And come to that, he's also fallen at the first. And Gordon Richards, his trainer, has won two. This is uh, Tony Mullins on Lantern Lodge, trained by his father, Paddy, who, of course, is responsible for that great mare dawn run. And now the start are calling him in. And the 40 runners being called in. Little pole there, a little bit behind the other 39. Going up to join him now. Mount Oliver turns, Gale Warning turns. Dorlatch is right over on the far side with Mount Oliver. And the starter, Michael Sears, waiting now to press the lever. And that's it, they're away. And racing towards the first, Fethard Friend is one of the first to show with Corbio on the inside. Essex racing up there to join the lead. And W again is up there with them as well. But it's Feathered Friend from Essex. W again. Tacroy also well there. Corbier on the inside. And it's Tacroy, Essex, W again. Corbier, Acarine, Feathered Friend as they cross the Melling Road and race to the first to be joining with John Hanmar. And W again is in the lead from Imperial Black. West Tip right up with them and so is Rupertino over the first. Porter Skeg is down and it looks as if he brought down Dorlatch. Dorlatch has been brought down by Porter Skeg at the first and over the second. It's W again in the lead from Tacroy, then Essex right up with them, then Rupertino. And I can't see a faller at the second though. Lantern Lodge is a very long way back. And Lantern Lodge is gone in fact. And over the big ditch, W again in front of Tacroy, then Essex, Kilkilarin. Then comes Azarovich, Rupertino. Duty is unseated his rider. Gale Warning is last at the fourth. W again from Tacroy. duty has been remounted, but as they go to the fifth, over to Julian Wilson. And Corbier was a faller at the fourth, and another Duke was badly interfered with as they come to the fifth fence with W again in the lead. W again over from Tacroy on the outside. Essex right up there with the leaders, as is Kilkelowin, and the Tsarovich just behind the leaders, as is St. Alazan. And they've all jumped out, but Duty has tailed off as they come down to Beecher's Brook with the leader, Tacroy from W again. Essex running very free, then Tsarovich at Beecher's. Tacroy over. W again over, and Essex and all the leaders are over. All the leaders are over. In fact, every surviving runner has jumped Beecher's Brook. The last one over is Duty, who falls as they come to the seventh fence. And over it, W again on the inside of Tacroy. Then the Tsarovich and Kilkalo in an Essex. Ten cherries on the inside. Then St. Alassane and West Tip in a good position. Also in a good position is classified as they come to the canal turn with W again leading. From Tacroy on the outside, the Tsarovich over in third. Then Kilkalo in and Essex on the wide outside. Ten cherries behind that, and then West Tip and Plundering with the faller. As they come to Valentine's Brook, W again, Tacroy, Kilkalo in, the Tsarovich, ten cherries, West Tip and classified as we rejoin John Hammer. And W again in the lead from Tacroy, then the Tsarovich third, Kilkalo in his fourth, then comes Essex fifth, then comes classified.